In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's reading from Revelation talks about the heavenly city, Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. And it has no need of sun or moon, because the light is God and the Lamb, which is Christ. So the reading from Revelation is the vision of what the heavenly city is. And the vision is what we are to aspire to here on earth. I was taken with the description about the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit producing its fruit each month. But this is what caught my attention. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. If there were ever a time for the healing of the nations, now is it. Uh, given uh, Putin's war in Ukraine, given what's going on around the world, given the, given the increase in racist shootings in this country, given climate change, given everything going on around us, this is a vision to keep in our hearts and in the front of our minds. And the reason I'm going on about it is because last Sunday, May 15th, was the last one for Dean Robert Willis at Canterbury Cathedral. And he said a few words at the end that I want to share with you. He talks about, this is what he said. He said, it's a really humbling experience. And you can see this on YouTube for yourselves if you go to Canterbury Cathedral's um, channel on YouTube and look for uh, Evensong for May 15th. It's a really humbling experience to stand in this particular place, meaning Canterbury Cathedral, and looking down on the compass rose, which is the symbol for the Anglican communion, and remembering back 20 one years of coming here and not knowing Canterbury or its cathedral at all. And in finding that I had a learning curve to make, which wasn't going to happen in a hurry. It would happen by immersing myself in the life of this community and seeing what its vision was and what its vision could be. But at the same time, I had to learn, and it was a lovely learning curve just how precious this place is to so many places right across the world. For the holy places of the world have a very special vocation. And this is why I'm reading this to you. Have a very special vocation, not just in hospitality when people come, but in being almost beacons of a particular kind of light, proclaiming the spiritual dimension of humanity, and holding out a hope which is of the divine image within our own humanity. And those beacons of light across the world, which are cathedrals and the holy places, have never been more necessary than today. When people are wanting the light of Christ shown for them, then we, shall we say, a city that is set on a hill that can't be hid, are the places which must shine that light of Christ. In a brotherhood and sisterhood of churches and holy places and cathedrals right across the world, that is a necessary statement and witness to the fact that humanity is intricately composed of body, mind, and spirit. And the holy places represent that spiritual dimension which infuse humanity's capacity to reflect the divine image. We at Grace Church, you watching this, are beacons of light. You and we as individuals and as Grace Church, along with all the other holy places in the world, are needed and necessary. And like it or not, we provide that image of the heavenly city, which John talks about in Revelation to the world. You and I and our church 
are the reflection and the image of God to others. It's huge to be that. But we do it every day in how we welcome the stranger, how we treat each other, in our ability to be generous, and above all, to be kind. So then, in this time of upheaval and uncertainty, let us be that beacon of light. Let us be that image of God for others. Let what we do reflect that reality. May that reality be reflected in all of us. Amen.